We've got an amazing treat for you this show. We've got a first hands-on playthrough of the currently in development remake of Sunset Riders for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. We're gonna play through this early demo of the game and ask, is it as good as the arcade and does it beat the Super Nintendo version? My name's Mike and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. Sunset Riders in the arcade was an absolute favorite of mine, and seeing it come to my Sega Mega Drive was a dream come true, except that dream was shattered when you actually got it out of the box and plugged it into your Mega Drive, because the game wasn't the arcade game. It had the essence of the arcade game, but it was completely different. Level design, the number of characters you had, the audio design, color palettes, it was all in all a disappointing port. And what rubbed salt into the wounds is that our Super Nintendo brethren got an absolutely amazing port of the game on their Super Nintendos. But all of that is about to be remedied because nearly 30 years later, there's a team that are bringing us a remake for our Sega Genesis and Mega Drive of Sunset Riders. A remake that aims to get closer to the arcade port and maybe, just maybe, beat the awesome Super Nintendo version. Now this remake has been put together by two of the most talented names in the ROM hacking and game development scene for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. And they've sent me this ROM, this exclusive first playthrough of the ROM that they've been working on. It's their first build. I understand that it's much further along than what we're about to see today, but we'll do a playthrough first and then we'll do a little analysis. We'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons to see how this remake fares against other versions of the game. So we've got this early build up and running. Remember, this is still in development, so there may be some glitches and bugs that you see along the way. And it's only the first level that we've got a actual ROM working for. I know the guys have got further along with it, but this is what they've sent me. Um, we're gonna be using the Kega emulator uh, to play this game through. And so again, when I'm capturing this, if, if the character flashes a little bit, he may turn invisible, but that's not actually what's happening on screen. So uh, first impressions. This looks like the arcade game. You know, it hasn't got that horrible border that the Mega Drive version has at the top for the score. Um, colors look super vibrant. I mean, I would not say this is a Sega Mega Drive game, but to be honest with what these guys have been doing lately with color palettes, uh, I'm not surprised to see it like this. But from memory, this looks very close. Uh, and to start with, I love the sound and especially the gun as he, as he kind of flicks it around his fingers, got this that awesome little sound effect there sounds awesome. Uh, so I'm just going to go quickly through the controls, see if we've got any uh, new controls added to the, the joypad. Obviously, being a three button joypad for the Sega Mega Drive, uh, we were limited on some of the controls. One of the biggest ones is that you couldn't slide on a dedicated button. Uh, so that's the first thing I'm going to try. So I'm just pressing other buttons here to see if I can get him to slide. No, I. Okay, so the slide is the same as the Mega Drive. You have to press kind of diagonally down uh, at left or right, and then they slide. I'd love if they added six button support here so you could slide on a shoulder button uh, or, or one of the other buttons there. But um, still, at, you know, it's cool to have that in there. Right, so sound effects are already cool. The gun. Now, the biggest problem I have with the Sega Mega Drive version is, you know, it's a kind of pew pew sound for the gun. Whereas the arcade had this awesome gun sound effect. So uh, we'll give that a shot now. Yep, it's got, it's got that arcade sound effect. Already this game is a hundred times better than the original. Right, let's, uh, let's stop messing around. Let's go kill some, uh, some bad guys. Oh my goodness. This feels like the arcade version. Of course, being a Mega Drive game, uncensored. Uh, if you had the Super Nintendo version of this game, uh, you would have had a censored version. Oh my goodness. Even the bullets. So on the Mega Drive version, the bullets are these little red dots, uh, which are a little bit hard to see. Uh, whereas these are flashing bullets. 
So uh, a lot easier to see what's going on. Damn it, died. Right, okay, so we haven't got the multi-guns here, so you should have two guns with that power-up. So it looks like the power-ups aren't included uh, in this build of the game just yet. But this is it, this is the arcade version. And it, it oh my goodness, why didn't I jump there? Uh, this is the arcade version, and it looks like we've also got that transparency on the hay. So you can see his legs here as I'm walking along. His legs are behind the hay in the uh, in the trough here, which is attention to detail is amazing. Uh, oh, women! Uh, another thing that was great explosions. So the explosions there um, were always uh, they were slightly different on the Mega Drive version, and then on the Super Nintendo version they were very pixelated. It's not arcade perfect, but it's it's close. Uh, we got the horses in there again. We'll do a comparison later. Um, with other platforms, but uh, it looks like it looks like the arcade version. And look, different coloured balls as well. You had these dark brown balls for for the Sega Mega Drive version. It's super fast. I got to say, the control on this is amazingly fast. Uh, I'm not very <laughs> I'm not very good at this, but uh, it feels like the arcade version. I can't get over how close it feels to the arcade version. All the fire effects there. Oh, this feels so good. They've got the shadows. Oh, look at this. So uh, <laughs> I'm getting excited here. There's grass in the background there, usually just like a single color um, on the console versions, but they've got color in there. Uh, this is. I, I'm saying this a lot, but this feels like I'm playing the arcade version of the game. It's super close. No, don't die. No, no, I've got it messed up there. Right, okay. Even the balls. Oh my god. This is brilliant. I really, really love the attention to detail here. And like I said at the beginning, you wouldn't expect this to be a Sega Mega Drive with the amount of colours on screen. Right, so we have the final boss now. Good sound effects there. Okay, so it doesn't look like the um, final boss is hooked in yet. So, yeah, I can't do any damage. There's no AI characters uh, jumping around trying to kill me. I can't get up to the top there. Um, so, it, it really is just that first level uh, we don't have power-ups in there um, we don't have the final boss in there uh, but so far this is stunning absolutely stunning um, let's see if we can get the uh, dead zone here where we can just hide should be around about here yeah pretty amazed by this uh, this feels like the arcade version. I, I don't feel like I've seen as many colours on a Mega Drive game before as I'm seeing here. Now, I obviously have. But when you compare it to the old Mega Drive version of Sunset Riders that we got back in the day, and what we have here, this is possibly one of the best arcade conversions that I've seen for the Sega Mega Drive. Right. Let's dive into a little bit more detail on this conversion, on this remake of Sunset Riders. So let's break down what we've just seen. And instead of doing the obvious comparison against the Sega Genesis version, we're actually gonna compare this against the Super Nintendo version. So get your fanboy hats on, cause we're about to jump feet first into a classic console war comparison. This NES version was a great port of the arcade game, probably one of the best. But does this remake surpass the excellent Nintendo port or does Sega's 16-bit console still find itself in second place? Let's start with the obvious comparison, graphics. At first glance, both ports look similar, but as we go through the level, we notice some significant differences. The first is that the new Genesis remake has a greater contrast and makes the game more vibrant. This gives me the impression that the Mega Drive has a richer color palette, but of course it doesn't. The high contrast really helps the Genesis version stand out over the SNES version. And in some cases, you may think that you're looking at a slightly inferior Mega Drive port rather than the Super Nintendo version. 
Time has been kind to the old Sega Genesis with better tools, skills and techniques that allow developers to really get the most out of the hardware, making even the dullest of arcade ports back in the day look like masterpieces today with remakes and remasters. Next up, you'll notice how much closer to the original the remake is. The Super Nintendo version, whilst being an excellent port, is missing some graphical touches. Some are minor bits of polish, others are entire sprites. Things like railings, signs and rubble are missing from the SNES version, but are in the Genesis version. Also, larger sprites like the horses and the stables, trees and even the bulls are in the Sega's 16-bit remake. There's also some nice additional colour work that's been added, like the prairie grass as you approach the first boss. Now the remake also keeps the lack of censorship, making it closer to the arcade original. The SNES version cut out the working women and replaced them with farmers' wives. Also, the enemy cowgirls are nowhere to be seen. The remake has all of this. Particles are another area where the Mega Drive remake is significantly better than the SNES version. Just look at these explosions, and in some cases, the SNES version is completely missing large environmental particles. Next up is the sound, and to be honest, this is where things get just a little closer. But fear not Mega Drive fans, because the Super Nintendo had great sound design, and getting closer to it is only a good thing for us. First off, the sound is miles ahead of the original release for the Sega Mega Drive. From what I can tell, nearly everything has had a rework. The most notable is probably the gun sound effects, which are now on par with the arcade, and I think even better than the Super Nintendo version. There are also multiple enemy death sounds, whereas the SNES only has one, and the other little touches like bottle smash sounds and the door creaking as it shuts, all absent from the Nintendo version. The soundtrack is a little harder to compare and I think comes down to personal preference, although the SNES is much closer to the arcade and it's a challenge to tell the two apart. The Genesis on the other hand cannot get away from its iconic synth sound processor and whilst I think the audio track sounds fantastic in this style, it's not quite as good as the arcade and Super Nintendo original. Now we've covered remasters and brand new titles for our Sega Genesis and Mega Drive on this show, but a remake and a remake on this scale, we've not covered one of these before, and it has to be one of the most ambitious projects out there. Looking at Sunset Riders on the Sega Mega Drive, Sunset Riders Arcade is absolutely phenomenal. Now the team only provided the first level and that was incomplete, and I understand that they're a little further on in the game's progress, so we still have a little time to wait before we get this full remake. But nevertheless, it's shaping up to be one of the best titles on Sega's 16-bit console. Now, if you love the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, if you love retro gaming, if you love seeing brand new games on old consoles, then why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below this video. We also put out brand new content every single Monday, and so that you never miss it, make sure you hit the little bell also just below this video. Now, if you can't wait until Monday, don't worry, because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy, two of which you can watch over here.